Okay, so for problem number four, um, we have that the universe is a set of real numbers and that A is the empty family of subsets of the real numbers. And for item A, we want to show that the intersection um, of uh, all the A's belonging to the family is equal to the real numbers. So because we're trying to show equality, we're going to have to show a double inclusion. So we're going to have to show that this is a subset of that and that this is a subset of that. So um, let's, begin, let's begin by doing that. So we're going to begin by saying, uh, let A be a subset of the real numbers, right? Um, and so for part one, so for part one, we're trying to show that the real numbers, uh, the set of the real numbers, um, is a subset of the intersection. So to do that, we're going to say let x belong to the real numbers and then show that x must also be in this intersection. Um, let x belongs to the real numbers. Um, and here we're just going to say note that, note that for all a, and a, this normal a, just represents a any subset of R. So maybe it's the natural numbers, maybe it's the rationals, um, or any other subset that you want. So we're saying, hey, for all the subsets of the real numbers, no matter what they are, um, for all a, a does not belong to the family, right? Does not belong to that family. This is super important because that family is the empty family of subsets of R. So that family actually has nothing in it, right? Um, and now we're going to use a little trick that's called vacuous proof, which we're going to use a conditional. So a conditional is of the form if P, then Q. Now, if the antecedent is false, the statement is always going to be true, right? So eventually what we want to do is to say, hey, X belongs in this thing here, because if X is there, then R is a subset of it, right? So to show that x is there, we're going to um, say if something, then x belongs there, right? And if that something is going to be false, because then that conditional is always true. So we're going to say, um, so the statement, um, if the set, if the set A belongs to the family, um, then x is in that set A is vacuously true, true as the antecedent is always false, as the antecedent is always false. Um, and so we, what we have shown here is that Hey, since this statement is always true, um, thus x belongs to A, right? Since the statement here is always true. Um, and so what's the conclusion here? Um, thus x belongs to A, and we can say for x belongs to A, for all A belonging to the subset, right? So if x belongs to A for all all A belonging, sorry, not subset, for all A belonging to that family, um, thus x belongs to the intersection, uh, x belongs to the intersection of, so x belongs to this intersection by definition. Um, and so if X belongs to this intersection, therefore, therefore, so the point here is that we took some element that was in the real numbers and then we showed that that element was in the intersection. Therefore, our conclusion is going to be that the set of the real numbers is a subset of the intersection. Okay, um, so that was part one. Now let's do part two where we want to show the opposite way. We want to show that the intersection is a subset of the real numbers, right? Um, so we're going to say we have that, we have that every A belonging to the family is a subset 
of R. By definition, right? Because we said let A be the empty family of subsets of R. So if it had any element in it, that element would be um, a subset of R, right? Um, thus, thus um, all elements, elements in the intersection, so belong to the real numbers, right? Um, because by definition, you know, everything that is in the family is a subset of the real numbers, right? So anything that has to be, anything that is in the intersection is also going to be in the real numbers. Thus, all elements belong to the real numbers. Therefore, therefore, the intersection of the family of A is a subset of R. So we have shown a double inclusion, right? We have shown that it's a subset here and it's a subset the other way around. So our conclusion is going to be, so let me zoom out. So conclusion, conclusion, the intersection is equal to the set of real numbers. And that is it for item A. So let me erase all of this. All right. Um, now let's do item B. So what we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do item B by contradiction. Um, whenever we're dealing with the empty set, uh, a contradiction usually is a good way to go. So we're going to say, um, for item B, we're gonna say, let X be a real number. So let X uh, be a real number. And suppose that, suppose that X belongs to the union, right? The union of A belonging to A of A. So just suppose that it belongs to the union, right? And the reason that we said let X be a real number is because um, the family is a subset of, a family of subsets of the real numbers. So if it were a complex number, it would not be able to belong to the union, right? So we're saying, okay, suppose that it belongs to the union. Then, so now we're going to apply the definition of X belonging to the union. So then um, there exists uh, an A belonging to that family where an A is just a set, right? Um, such that, such that X belongs to A. Um, but the family is empty. So A cannot belong to the family, which is a contradiction. Which is a contradiction. Yeah. So we suppose that there was some element in the union and then we showed that it leads to a contradiction because then we're saying, hey, then A belongs to that family, but then A does not belong to that family. So you can't have a statement that is true and false at the same time, right? So it means that our uh, initial hypothesis must have been wrong. Um, so, so for all, all, for all X belonging to the real numbers, X does not belong to the union, right? To the union. Because we suppose that X belonged to union and X was just some real number. And then we showed, hey, there's no real number that can be in the union. Um, so thus, the union must be empty, right? Must be empty. And if the union is empty, it therefore means that it's the empty set. Therefore, therefore, if the union is empty, then the conclusion is going to be that this is the same thing as the empty set. Um, <clears throat> and that is it for item B. And lastly, for item C, um, this is going to be fairly straightforward for item C, we're going to use what we did for part A and part B. So we want to conclude that the intersection um, is not a subset of the union. So we're going to say, 
Um, so for C, we're going to say by part A, because remember that part A, we showed that the intersection is equal to the, the set of real numbers. By part A, um, we have we have that the intersection of A is equal to the real numbers and by part B, part B we have that we have that the union is equal to the empty set, right? Um, so we're going to say Note that, note that, for all x belonging to the real numbers, x does not belong to the empty set, because the empty set has no members, right? So, the conclusion, if for all elements in the real numbers, those elements are not in the empty set, the conclusion is that the set of real numbers is not a subset of the empty set, right? Um, it simply can't, it simply can't be because the empty set has no elements. Thus, because we have shown that the real numbers, um, the set of real numbers is equal to the intersection and the empty set is equal to the union, thus, um, the, now we just substitute it, right? Whenever we have R, we uh, substitute it for the intersection is not a subset of the of the union and that is going to be our conclusion so that is it for problem number four